Bear Grisel's Adventures, The Sunfire Challenge, Six Cat and Cave, The Lioness John, Closed Her Eyes and Locked Away. It was that she couldn't care less or just couldn't be bothered with two humans right now. Why remember what Bear had did, said. I guess she's not hungry or protecting her cubs or supplies, she said. That's right, Bear agreed. Plus, lions like to ambush. If you can see them and they can see you, and if you stand tall so you don't act like prey, they're probably safe. He waved a hand. That's why this lot are all taking it so clean. He might allow herself to relax a little. All these animals knew his lion better than she did, and if they felt safe. Suddenly, 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 there was a flash black and gold like an arrow, and it headed straight for one of the envelopes. The flame of the water hole vanished instantly as every animal fled in a different direction. Bear knelt quickly and filled the water bottle. While the cheetah distracted them, he murmured, he screwed the top back up. Let's get off. The cheetah was still tasting the, its prey. The envelope was leaping about all over the place, which meant the cheetah had to serve to cheat keep up. Did you know that cheetah was there? She asked as they hurried back. I thought there was there might be something waiting to ambush. I didn't want to brush straight in. Bear tipped a couple drops from a small bottle, bottle into the water. He screwed the flask shut and gave it a shake. Are you doing these drops? He said, I'll make the water taste like rubber, but at least it will It'll be safe to drink. Oh, Eva okay. shot a final look at the water hole and was surprised at what she saw. The the cheetah seemed <laughs> to gave to seem to have given up. It's lodged so that its stomachs almost touch the ground. The cheetah slunk away and plunked itself down next to a large clump of grass. Something moved. And then three calf sized Cheetah cubs came tumbling up. I thought cheetah, cheetahs were the fastest animal in the world, Evi said. Why couldn't it catch that envelope? You're right, that cheetah is are the fastest for, no, for one offspring. Bear agreed. Nothing can catch them or get away if they run in a straight line. But the envelope was making the cheetah... Use up all her shrimp 
zigzagging to follow her. Look, Bear said, she's all burnt up out now. She had to have a long rest before she hunt again. <clears throat> And even if you just grab some prey. She might be so tired that some Henya Henyena could come along and steal it off her before she take a bite. Levi thought about that as they walk. Levi didn't like the look of her food when she was at home. She could say no thanks. She might feel a little bit, a bit of hungry, but she knew she was never gonna starve. But it was, but out here it was different. The cheetah and her three kids might all starve if she couldn't catch their next meal. Eli's stomach rumbled again. She almost get it, saying no to that real tongue. Eli thought hard about the cheetahs. She knew she couldn't do anything to help, but not unless she ended up with their next meal herself, but maybe she wouldn't be quite so fuzzy the next time she didn't really fancy eating something that was offered. Half an hour later, Bear said that I don't, I didn't, had done its job. Levi's mouth was so dry that she just wanted to glug a half the bottle down. But Bear told her they must both just take a mouthful. Levi held the water in her mouth. Ugh, Bear hadn't been wrong about the rubbery taste. The day was getting hotter, even hotter. The sun had risen bit by bit all the, by the time that Evi had begun her sunfire, and now it was almost overhead. The heat seemed to turn the air thicker, so something they had to do, had to wade through. At last, something soiled. Emerge and head out of the shimmery air. Levi blinked in and focused her eye. It was a pile of water about 10 metres high, one on top of the other, and with bushes and small trees all around the base. Shay! It certainly looks like it, Bear said with a smile. We'll count, camp down for a few minutes and we'll press on in the late afternoon. As they got closer, Eli could see the dark opening to a cave. Perfect, perfect, perfect.
but what they could see if it looked empty. But Eva realized she couldn't see all the way back, all the way to the back. She wasn't. It was was too dark inside. But anything that was in there would be able to see them perfectly. Okay, so far, Bear murmured as she checked the entrance. But just in case, she bent down and picked up a stone. Are you ready to move away quickly? If there's a family of lions in there that won't be happy about being disturbed. Then he threw the stone at the side side of the cave as hard as he could, and shouted, "Ha!" Nothing happened. There still grew a couple of more stones. Still nothing. If there was anything with teeth and claws in there, it would be out by now. Bear said he knelt and prodded the ground. More animal tracks. Flying rhinos, these all are the kind of visitor we don't want wandering in while we're here. We need to bear a, build a barrier out of something. If I wanted so badly to be in that lovely, cool cave, but she also didn't want to be disturbed by bad-tempered, dangerous wild animal. She looked around. There was a tree about forty metres away, standing on its own. It remembered. It reminds Evi of a giant mushroom. The trunk was tall and thin. The branches were like a flat layer. Much wider than the tree's height. Good spot," said Bear. "That's an Arctica, Arctica tree, and its branches are good and thorny. Let's grab a couple of those fallen ones." Eli and Bear had to make a couple of chips. She would drag the branches over the entrance to the cave, while the savanna slowly baked around them. Eva had a nasty jab in her thumb from a thorn that just went straight in deep. Before she noticed it hurting. After that, it took a bit more care to evade the thorns. Bear tied the knife to the end of a stick. That's a bit of nylon cord from his rucksack. Then, just in case, she said when she saw Eva. Eli looking confused. Then, with the bearer of horns behind them, the spear in front of them, finally, Bear and Eva went inside the cave. It smelled of the animal that had used it. Was cool. It must have been twenty degrees cooler than outside. If I could feel all the tension draining out of her, he wanted to lie down and sleep. We'll have it. We'll give it four hours," said Bear. He pulled his bag of biltong out of his rucksack. Then we'll move on. Have a bite. Have a bite.
Eva felt too tired to put up a fight. She knew she needed to eat it, even if it looked like a bit of old leader. So before she had time to think of all the reason why she didn't want to, she took a piece and put it into her mouth. I think she mumbled. Surprisingly, it tasted okay, short of sleep sweet and salty at the same time. They washed their bill tongue down with another swig of water. After that, Bear put the meat and the bottle away and gave the rug sack to Eli. He used as a pillow. He lay down and put his hat over his face. Levi gazed out beyond the dorm at the brightly lit of Santa Wherever she looked, the air was shimmering. What would happen if they didn't find more water in this miracle heat? Thanks for watching. Bye.